Hi everyone, I'm Shin from NetEase Games. Uh, today I'm going to talk about AirTest project, uh, the next generation automated testing for games. Uh, two months ago on GDC, uh, we uh, launched and open sourced this project. So how many of you here have heard of it? Oh, pretty much. <laughs> uh, okay. Today I'm going to talk about these three topics. Uh, challenges in game testing, and how our test project can help you solve these problems, and also our internal practice of large-scale uh, real device testing. So the first issue is that we have so many games to test in NetEase Games. Uh, these are games we developed and uh, released uh, since 2014 we have released uh, over 150 mobile games. And also we have run several PC games for over 10 years. So how do we ensure the high quality of all these games? Another issue is Android device fragmentation. And because Android system is open source and OEMs can customize their own Android phones. And this graph shows the situation in China uh, you can see Samsung, uh, Huawei, Xiaomi, uh, each have uh, dozens of Android models, and each model has different uh, screen resolution, different uh, system APIs, or even graph drivers. In NetEase games, we usually need to uh, test on over on more than 200 Android phones before releasing a game. Then let's take a look at the uh, difference of testing between apps and the games. Uh, the first one is uh, usually our app, our games are released on multiple platforms uh, like Android, iOS, the same, uh, game ver the same version of game on different uh, platforms. And sometimes on desktop, and just now we said a Chrome OS, right? And sometimes HTML5 uh, platforms, console, or even VR. Uh, the next uh, difference is that we have, uh, we, we got less support from uh, third party. Uh, I mean, uh, such as uh, test frameworks or testing tools and uh, platforms. Uh, unlike apps, uh, Google provide app developers with uh, test frameworks like UI Automator or Espresso. And also testing tools are integrated in Android Studio. And uh, also we have Firebase Test Lab for app testing. Uh, another big issue is that uh, games always need more uh, test cases because uh, users, uh, there are more content uh, that can be uh, played in, in a game than in an app. So the test cases are, uh, increases exponentially in games. So uh, how do we solve these uh, issues? Uh, we can hire more and more people to do testing, but uh, hiring more people to do tests on 200 Android phones, uh, that's not uh, tolerable, I think, even if it's in, in China. So we can, uh, so automation is here to help. Uh, actually, we have developed this project for three years uh, internally. Uh, and last year on Google I.O., I talked with uh, Firebase Test Lab team, and we cooperate on open sourcing this project. Uh, so let me introduce a test IDE first. Uh, it's a desktop IDE. The, left, uh, the, the right side is the mirror window of an Android phone uh, connecting with your PC via ADB. And the middle part is a a code editor where you can write arbitrary Python code. And the left part shows the hierarchy of this, the UI hierarchy of this Unity game and also the APIs provided by our test framework. And when you operate on the uh, screen window, uh, test code will be automatically generated on the, uh, in the code editor. Let's see the demo. Click the recording button. And perform a touch action. It will generate a sentence in Python. 
Also, you can edit it. A swipe action. And then we can sleep one second. Also, make assertions of the UI show up. Yeah, then we can run it immediately on this phone to see if it works. After you run the tests, uh, yeah, it worked. After you run it, you can check the HTML report. It shows uh, every step of your tests. Yeah, if any step went wrong, it will be labeled red and you can see the failure point. Yeah, you may have noticed that we have two, we have two underlying test framework here. Uh, the first is a test framework. It uses image recognition technology to locate your elements. And then it uses device uh, APIs to perform simulated input. Yeah, this is the structure of a test. We provide users with a simple test uh, uh, API, uh, like uh, simulate input, uh, like make assertion. And then it uses image recognition to locate the UI. And then we have a underlying uh, abstract layer of platform API. Uh, we unify the uh, simulated in, uh, input APIs of different platforms so that user can uh, run their script on different uh, platforms, like uh, Android, iOS, and Windows, and VR. There is another framework called POCO. Uh, this, uh, this framework is similar to the uh, test frameworks uh, for apps, like UI Automator for, for Android. Uh, but most of the games use uh, graphic API like uh, OpenGL or Vulkan to render their UI widget, so we cannot directly use UI Automator on Android for games. So we developed POCO. Yeah, this is how it works. Uh, we also have a uh, underlying abstract layer of, uh, of device abstraction yeah, for different game engines. We provide uh, each game engine an SDK so that the test framework can communicate with the game engine via uh, JSON, JSON RPC, and then we unify uh, different game engines so we can write tests for different game engines. Yeah, also the custom engines. Uh, in the morning, I, uh, I saw most of you uh, are using custom engines. We provide multiple language SDK so you can implement in your own game engine and start using our test framework and also our tools. Yeah, here is a comparison. I test use uh, image recognition to locate UI and use platform API to perform simulated input. And what's cool here is it does not require any instrumentation, just plug in your phone and uh, start using. And we support multiple platforms. And POCO uses UI hierarchy inspection and use JSON RPC to communicate with the SDK in game engine. And you need to integrate our SDK. In, it usually takes less than 10 minutes. And now we support Unity and Cocos, uh, these two game engine. And also Android native app, uh, we, use, uh, we implement an SDK using accessibility service. So you don't need to integrate anything into your app for Android native apps. And also custom game engine. So how, how do we choose which framework to use? Uh, here are some suggestions from us. Uh, actually, in Natis, we have written thousands of tests for different type of uh, games uh, internally. And the advantage of air test is obvious. It's, it requires no instrumentation. And using OpenCV to do, uh, to do assertion, to make assertion of the UI is reliable because it checks exactly what users are expected to see. And for POCO, since it uses UI hierarchy inspection, it can be more accurate 
especially for uh, cases of 3D object when the objects change their orientation in games. Yeah, and this project, uh, this uh, POCO is uh, similar to test frameworks for apps uh, like, uh, like your automation and it covers the, what is missing for games. And we released these two uh, project on uh, GDC two months ago and we got uh, 6,000 downloads and uh, over 1,000 uh, 1, stars in this two months. And please try our project and star us on GitHub. But is that it? Uh, we have two more new features in this two months. Uh, first, we support iOS. Uh, actually, we have supported iOS uh, last year, but the performance is not uh, good enough to release to be released. Let's see this demo. Yeah, connecting your iOS with your Xcode, then you can operate the screen, just like uh, for Android phones. And this is one of our games. Then you can run the tests on this iPhone. Oh, that's it. Uh, the back end of this iOS support is origin originated from Facebook web driver agent, uh, but the web driver agent is, the problem is, is that it's too slow. A simple touch action can take as long as one second, and it's not tolerable for games automation. So we optimized most of its API last, last month, and now the frame rate can be up to 15 uh, FPS uh, in the ATS ID. Another feature is we support web pages automation. You can open the Chrome browser in the IDE and then you can operate on the Chrome and then the code will be automatically generated. Yeah, the script is based on Selenium framework. Also, you can use AirTest API to make assertions. To run the test and then generate the report. Uh, since, since Selenium is uh, quite mature in web pages automation, we have no reason to reinvent it. So we just uh, write, we just wrote a plugin for AirTest IDE to uh, to help recording this uh, web pages automation. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think it will be useful if you are uh, releasing game on HTML uh, plat uh, platform. Until now, we talked about air test project. You can use air test IDE to record and, uh, and run the test on your PC and on your phone. But how do we test on hundreds of Android phones? The first thing is Firebase Test Lab. Uh, Firebase Test Lab is a uh, test service provided by Google Firebase team. And what we do cooperating with uh, their team is uh, we support running air test and POCO script on, on Firebase Test Lab. And you can use air test ID to bundle your your test script into an APK, and then you can upload it to the FTL web page, and then you can start an instrumentation test and use the cloud of devices provided by FTL. 
And this is our internal device farm. Uh, we, have, uh, we have set up a device farm of 200 devices, 200 Android devices, and we, we have written, uh, now the number could be 2,000 scripts. And we run those scripts uh, of different games every week because our game are updated weekly. And let's see how it works. Yeah. It's just start game and run the test generated by test ID. Uh, as for our roadmap for this uh, automation project, uh, we, are intended, we intended to support more clients, uh, iOS, Android ML, emulator, and web pages. Uh, these are in uh, beta version. You can try it now. And feel free to, uh, to file us an issue if you find any bug. And also, uh, we are hybrid apps in Unreal Engine is in the future. Uh, also, we supported, uh, we supported uh, Android TV, uh, but I'm not sure about Chrome OS, but maybe it works. <laughs> and uh, also another important uh, thing is we, we, we want to build up the open source community for this project, and I hope, uh, I hope more and more developers like it and get involved in this project. Yeah, thank you. And any question? You mentioned you were using the accessibility service. Yeah. Um, did you have any issue with that when that was restricted recently? Uh, when it was? The accessibility service. It was restricted for uh, apps that were using those launchers or for any apps that were trying to access uh, the reverse uh, color, um, tap to enlarge. Those are things that were being restricted because they were being taken advantage of. Have you guys seen any impact from that? Uh, for for UI testing, we uh, for UI testing of uh, native apps, uh, we don't see any restriction. I think it's uh, it can do what UI automation or its vessel do. Yeah. 